So this weekend, I went out and bought another cutter. So other than the flat tire, let's just ignore that. There's something going on with this machine. And I really don't know if I understand at this moment what's going on. So what happens is when I put it down on the ground, it digs in instead of floating on the ground. I have set the float spring several times. That's not working. So I have a feeling there's something that's broke somewhere. I don't know where it's at. But right now I don't have time to fool with it. So I needed to do something different. So sometimes you just got to step back and start over. Well, that's what we're going to do. So here's the deal. I have been fighting with this New Holland 488. I still think it's a good cutter, but it's because something's wrong with it. And it doesn't always cut like it's supposed to. So I'm going to have to dig into it and figure out what's going on. But I don't have time. It's hay season, and that's what's been going on. We have to get hay off the ground. I got to get hay cut. And I don't have time working on this cutter. And this is the only cutter I own. So um, I decided to just go out and find a used, another used cutter for now and, and utilize it uh, until hay season's over. And then when we get to this fall and this winter, I'll work on this 488 and try to get it back up and running in better shape. But until then, I got hay to cut and I just don't have time. So this weekend, I went out and bought another cutter. So I didn't buy the most popular cutter out there. I mean, I ended up going out and buying a green one. It is a John Deere brand, or it's a basically one of the brands that they do carry. Uh, John Deere contracts to have this brand made. It is a Frontier DM 5060. Now this is like a, a fairly new, a new one actually, believe it or not. This, this cutter is a 2021 and it's in fairly good shape it did not cut a lot of land yet because you can tell by just looking at the hats that they haven't even hardly wore the paint off of them much less uh, anything else now it's not perfect by no means the gentleman that had it didn't use it very much and um, he lent it out well that can cause problems when you lend out something like this now before you tear me up in all the comments about frontier cutters I know Frontier is not the top of the line. I know it's not a coon, or it could be a coon, but we can't say that because John Deere keeps that hush-hush. But we do know that the Frontier brand is, is their, I guess you could say their generic brand, okay? It's not their, it's not their top of the line uh, brand at all. More like a house brand, if you will. It's not a coon cutter. It's not a Viking or I'm not even sure how to say that. <laughs> it's not a Crone. Uh, it's not a New Holland. It's not a Massey Ferguson. It's not a John Deere. Okay. It, it's, it's none of those. And it's, it's not a Vermeer. I know that. Okay. So I know that those cutters, all those cutters are good brands and well-known throughout the hay businesses. And I got this pretty reasonable, you know, I've got it pretty reasonably priced. Uh, and, and that's the reason I bought it. I don't have the money right now to run out and buy one of those higher dollar cutters for now. But if I can get this one to get us through hay season this year, and I can get this one to maybe last a little bit longer even, I, I don't know, we'll see. But for the price I paid for it, I think I did pretty good. And I think it will, it will last for now. And that's the whole point of buying this cutter for right now. I have to get through hay season. So I'm gonna take you around it real quick and just kind of show it to you real quick and give you a, a, a quick look at it. Like I said, this is a Frontier. This is a 5060. This is a seven foot, seven inch cutter. It is a disc cutter. Uh, it's in pretty good condition, actually. I do see some issues with it. Uh, like I said, the gentleman that owned it lent it out. Guys, if you're gonna lend your equipment out, be careful doing that. This is, this little bolt right here, it's got a little bend in it. Uh, and then it has down here where the belt tensioner is at, the belt tensioner right here has, has some issues and we're gonna have to fix all of that. But it's not bad at all. This thing is almost, I mean, it doesn't even have the paint wore off of it hardly. It's just, unfortunately, I think it has more to do with lending a piece of equipment out 
and someone not knowing how to use it, not knowing how to take care of it, and it comes back to you in not, a, not so much of pristine condition. We gotta get this thing off the trailer. And in order to do that, I gotta go get the tractor, get some straps around it. We're gonna go ahead and unhook it, get it off the trailer. And then what we'll do is we'll probably come back in, hook it up to the tractor, and then I'm gonna start kind of playing with it and working on it. But today we're just gonna get it off the trailer and show you uh, this cutter. Okay, so on the Frontier model, I noticed that when I started doing a little research on this model, there's nothing, there's hardly any information out there on it. And I don't know why. Uh, Frontier doesn't have a lot of, of uh, people using them, maybe. They're, maybe they're just not very popular. Maybe they're not that good, I don't know. But with that said, um, the Frontier line is an off-brand or a generic brand, uh, a, a lower cost brand that is put out by John Deere. And so therefore, this is a supposedly a lower cost cutter. Now I've heard rumors who makes this. I could say that it might be made by Kuhn. I don't know. I can't say that for sure, but I can say that there's a possibility these are made by Kuhn cutter. And, but like I said, there's not a lot of information. You can't find any reviews on them. You can't find anything negative nor positive on them other than people that says say that, you know, I wouldn't buy a Coon. That's all, I mean, I wouldn't buy a, other than people saying I would not buy a Frontier. But it, there's nothing out there. So I kind of look at it from a different standpoint because I look at it from a John Deere standpoint. If, it's a, if John Deere is carrying this model and they put it in on their floor as a model they're going to carry and put their name on it because their name is on this, um, then maybe it might not be a bad uh, cutter. And so, but we're going to find out. So we're, we're going to do a review on this cutter. I don't know how good it's going to be. There's nothing out there that talks about these cutters. Really, I don't find any information on them. So we're going to do it. We're going to do the review. This is a Frontier 50, DM 5060. It's got a seven foot cut, seven foot, seven inch cut. The whole cutter weighs right around a thousand pounds. Um, it's designed for under a 50 horsepower tractor. And I know that I have, and that's at the PTO. That tractor, my LS tractor has um, right at 63 horsepower, if I remember correctly, at the PTO. So this is well under what my LS tractor can, can cut with, but that's not the point. The point is, is I wanna be able to cut with a smaller tractor with this cutter. And that's why I was looking for either a seven foot or eight foot. I looked at several nine foot cutters. I decided not to buy a nine foot cutter because there is a possibility they usually will take right at that horsepower limit of 60 horsepower and I didn't want to go there. So I'm going to go ahead and use this. We're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and do a review on it. We're going to get it out in the field pretty soon, but it won't be for a day or two before I can get it out into the field. Today, all I'm doing is getting it off the trailer. I'm inspecting it. I'm going to check some oil on it, um, but it's really hot out here today. And so uh, it's probably close to 100 degrees right now. So we're going to probably not do a whole lot today. We may come back to this and finish this up. But let me show you a few features on the thing. 
So one of the things you have to remember, if you have one of these cutters, you have this style of cutter, you're thinking about buying one, when you put it up, when you put it away, <laughs> make sure you put the kickstands down as they call them. You have a kickstand that's underneath right here. This kickstand has to be down, but there's one more. This right here on this particular cutter. Now, all, some of them are different. They're, they're different layouts or different ways, but this folds down into here. And that keeps that cutter from, from buckling like this. When I picked it up, they did not do that. Therefore, the cutter was laying down and it was very difficult to get hooked up to your three-point hitch. So we had to lift it up in the middle, do some maneuvering and, and, and so forth. Probably took a little over 30 minutes to get this thing set up just so that we could hook it onto the tractor. What a mess. Again, somebody had borrowed it and they brought it back and they put it back that way. And that's, if you're gonna borrow somebody's stuff, make sure it comes back in as good a shape or better than what you took it in and not only that make sure you know what you're doing before you borrow it this cutter here was borrowed it has a few issues that i'm going to be looking into and trying to fix and make sure they're all good the cutters in, in good condition other than that hats are tight gearboxes are tight blades are supposed to be new i'm a little bit concerned only a little bit concerned that it could possibly have the wrong blades on it but i don't know that but i want to mention it we're going to try it and see what it does you have on these on these cutter heads this if you'll look at the way this spins you'll see that one one of these will spin one direction the other one will spin the other direction and then the other one will spin the opposite direction so every head on here spins opposite of the head next to it You'll see that happening right there. Now this cutter bar is tight. You can see how I can just kind of go back and forth. There's not a lot of slack at all in it. So this cutter bar is really tight. There's still paint on the heads here. It's really good shape. All the rock guards, everything looks in, in, in really good condition on this thing. So that's one of the reasons I went ahead and bit the bullet on it and bought it. Hopefully we, we end up with a, with a good cutter here. But because there's not a lot of information out there we're going to review the frontier cutter and we're going to give the good the bad the ugly of it and we're going to go from there and tell you everything we know about it, everything we can figure out about it everything we can see about it again this the cutter had a had a good uh cover on it now what's the cover for if you're not familiar with them the cover is here basically to keep rocks and debris from kicking up and all over you and i mean this is a lot this is a lawnmower is what this is this is a, a, a heavy duty lawnmower and when you're out in the pasture grass is tall and you hit a rock if those blades are designed to to rotate out of the way after it hits a rock you see that but the problem is it still can send that rock at you with the cover down It's designed to catch those, help catch those rocks or any other debris and keep that from flying up at you. This cutter, this, this cover is missing the pin out of it right there. That's not a big deal. I'll throw a pin back in it and call it done. It's missing a couple of the, the hold downs on it. That's not a big deal. I'm not really worried about that. But other than that, it's on here. <laughs> cover for one of these probably four or five hundred dollars and this covers in almost fairly new condition so we don't have to worry about that that's in good condition hats are in good condition i haven't had time to to check the the oil in it yet we will be doing that here soon we'll check the oil in it and then uh i think the spring tension is probably okay on it but we're going to check that too we're going to grease it up we need to check the oil in the gearbox and we'll probably leave this the way it is it's got a small amount of bend in it. it's not much just a little bit but this right here i'm going to look at this is our this is our belt tensioner right here and it's this is bent or looks to be bent i'm going to see if i can pop this up and pull that bend out of it to see if that's anything i need to worry about but for now it looks fine belts are tight belts are brand new on it looks they look brand spanking new on it so everything's in good shape 
So I tell you what, you guys stay tuned for the review on this thing. We're going to go through some maintenance on it, check it out, make sure it's in good shape. One of the things I did find, <laughs> there's no manual in the manual, little the operator's manual. There's no operator's manual with it. There's no manuals online either. So I couldn't find a single manual online. You can buy a manual for it, but there's no operator's manuals that you can go down and find a PDF for and download. Again, there's not a lot of information on these cutters, although they are supposedly made by a name brand company. And so I have pulled up that particular brand and I have found some information on it. I have found uh, some information that talks about some of the items that we were talking about just now. And so hopefully that will help us get through this. It was already has told me where the, where the uh, oil point checkpoints are on the cutter bar and they are right in the same place. So continue with us. But until next time, thanks.